Hey guys, welcome back to All in Law. This is a quick internal medicine, and today I'm gonna talk about neurology. Okay, and the today's topic is uh, it's what you call central central vertigo versus peripheral vertigo. So to understand what's the central and the peripheral vertigo, first we should know what's a vertigo is. Guys, what's a vertigo is nothing but if 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 you're standing and you you are you're immobile, okay, you're not moving, and you will have a sensation as if the things are moving around you, means, uh, right? So usually the patient will describe as their environment is spinning around them. Okay, so this is vertigo, and these vertigo episodes are associated with uh, very common as nausea and vomiting. Okay, guys, so there are multiple causes for that vertigo. You know very well. There's a peripheral and the central, right? Peripheral, we have ear diseases like Meniere disease, labyrinthitis. Okay, uh, perilymphatic fistula, cervical what you call uh, cervical vertigo. Then we have positional vertigo, traumatic vertigo, okay? In a central, we have uh, what do you call, uh, uh, due to the CNS causes, like if the patient is taking any drug, overdrug, toxicity, okay? Overdoses of the drug, toxicity, cerebellar or brain tumor, okay? And if the young patient has this central vertigo, then there can be, this can be a, what you call a multiple sclerosis. Okay, so this will be another topic I'm going to talk about in a, in, a, in, a, in a later video. But here I'm going to talk about the differences, how you should differentiate in uh, what you call it during your USMLE examination. Okay, guys, so let's talk about the onset. Onset. Well, the central vertigo is usually the gradual in onset. Because it can be what you call a, a brain tumor or right cerebellar right so it can be a gradual but if it depends if it's a drug toxicity overdose it can be acute also or sudden in onset okay but most of the time peripheral what you call uh, uh, vertigo will be in sudden in onset okay right let's talk about the tinnitus and the hearing loss Tinnitus uh, will be absent in case of central vertigo because ear is not affected, labyrinthine is not affected. That's why tinnitus absent, ear is a present, okay, in a peripheral vertigo. Similarly, the hearing loss. Hearing loss will be what you call, will be absent in central vertigo, whereas it will be present in the peripheral vertigo. Okay, and the most important is the nystagmus I'm going to talk about. Nystagmus is really very important because depending on the type of nystagmus, you have to diagnose the disease or type of vertigo in your USMLE examination. So in case of central vertigo, it will be a pure vertical. Remember the vertical, that's really very important because you see horizontal in case of peripheral vertigo. Okay, pure vertical and does not suppress with a fixation do not suppress with what you call doesn't suppress with fixation okay and multi direction whereas in a peripheral vertigo the nystagmus is mixed Okay, it's horizontal. And this suppresses with a fixation and it's unidirectional. So this suppresses and what you call with fixation and it's a unidirectional. Okay. Right. So that's really very important. Nystagmus is really very important. And the other signs like diplopia, cortical blindness. Extremity weakness, dysarthria, 
where do you see it's in a central right brain is if the brain is a cause then you see this whereas in a peripheral vertigo you don't see anything like that that's why so these are the important differences you should know um, if you want to differentiate whether it's central vertigo or a, what you call a peripheral vertigo why we should know why we should differentiate because the treatment varies okay if you know the cause then you can go ahead with the cause okay so usually the treatment symptomatic treatment for peripheral vertigo includes meclizine or in severe cases you can give what you call diazepam right but it all depends whether it's a meniere disease then you can do some other type of treatment also like a so, so uh, what you call low saltite and diuretics okay and surgical compression can be given if this doesn't work at all in uh, what you call if there's a benign paroxysmal positional vertigo that's a really very important the treatment for that is what you call uh, there is a manual known as uh, dix halpack manual right so those things you should know about this uh, what you call um, vertigo okay guys so thank you so much for watching this video take care